Well, it wouldn't be right if Kevin Stefanski didn't get a tight end. You know how he gives it up. We'll talk <laughs> about the uh, yeah, <laughs> the Browns signing. Uh, what are Deshaun Watson's old teammates from Houston, Jordan Atkins? Um, they've announced that they brought him into the fold. We'll talk about that the first segment. Second segment, we'll talk about what the addition of Jordan Atkins, Atkins really brings to the uh, Browns' tight end room. And what does that mean for a couple of guys that said? Uh, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, it's kind of party. Party is thick in there right now. What does that mean for guys like Harrison Bryant uh, and other guys that want to make this roster? We'll discuss it. And then we'll get to uh, in the third and final segment, the highlights of the week. Um, what are some of the high, uh, you know, highlights in terms of uh, who they brought in? We'll talk about who, who Jeff and I really felt were, I guess, the names of, uh, you know, m- worth mentioning as big time, uh, you know, fits and plugs the Browns are going to use in order to to rebuild this roster. We'll do it all coming back next on this episode of the Locked on Browns podcast. You are Locked on Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. The lady has been very excited this week. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB, on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd, at G Bush 91, Garrett Bush, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, 11 to 1, Monday through Friday on YouTube. On air personality 923 the fan barbershop always open every Saturday morning, eight to noon. We appreciate all of you for making Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day, whether it's on your favorite favorite podcast app, or of course, here on YouTube as well. Make sure you're subscribed, have the notifications on as well. Throw some likes on the episodes. And if you got Roku TV, search Lockdown Cleveland Sports, you will get your Cleveland sports fill. Uh, Browns to this point here on Friday did jump in one more move here. Um, tight end Jordan Akins. Um, second time now the Browns have dipped into the football factory of University of Central Florida. Um, Jordan Atkins, uh, a little bit older. Jordan Atkins is going to be Jordan Atkins is going to be 31 years old um, in April. So you know a little bit you know deviating from what has maybe been the Barry norm here. Uh, two-year contract, 5.2 annually, uh, as G eloquently spoke. Um, Jordan Dickens was a former Houston Texan, um, has you know had some success with Deshaun Watson. Um, and one thing for me, G, here, and you know, we talked about this a little bit with uh, Okoronkwo coming over from Houston. It was a really difficult situation last year to be on the Houston Texans. You know, obviously the franchise quarterback was gone. You know, here was a team that looked like, you know, they were tanking until they decided to be competitive the last couple of weeks. Um, If anybody remembers, the Houston Texans beat the Indianapolis Colts late in the regular season to eventually to essentially give the Chicago Bears the number one overall title. I mean, no over one selection in this draft. Um, and they did it on a touchdown on fourth and 20. Jordan Akins, coincidentally enough, was the guy who caught that ball. 37 receptions last year, five touchdowns. Um, comes into a room, and we'll get to this in the second segment, where you know comes into a positional room that you know could be changing for the Browns, their philosophy, how much use is just going to be there. Um, but the size is there, um, you know, 6'3", 245, uh, tested well during his draft cycle. Um Here's a guy, G, I just think you're trying to, you know, maybe just change things up here. You know, they've kind of run their course here, um, at least last season. And for David Njoku and Harrison Bryant, they've both been here now um, you know, together for three years. Obviously, David has been here longer than that. But, you know, Browns make a change here today, bring in another tight end of the fold. You know, I was thought that maybe this was going to be something they were going to address in the draft just because – and maybe who knows? Maybe they still will because the Browns love athletic, young, cheap tight ends. And this draft class brings you young 
athletic, cheap tight ends. But Jordan Aikens into the fold, uh, been around the league again, be 31 at the end of April, part of the 2018 draft class. Uh, but Brown's staying busy to this point, Garrett. Yeah, they um, I, I like what you said there, you know. I, you know, people may say, you know, the tight end room has run its course. Um, you know, Harrison Bryant coming out of, uh, you know, uh, Florida International, I believe, um, Florida Atlantic, excuse me. Um, he coming out of there, won the Mackey Award for the best tight end. He's a, he's a guy who um, the Browns are re- were really high on. He's a guy that, for one of the reasons, because he played so well, you were able to get rid of Austin Hooper, um, who who was probably one of your biggest free agents, paid a boatload of money to. But as you started to look at Harrison Bryant, for me, he never quite turned the corner. He never became a huge down-the-field target, a, a, a jump ball guy in the red zone, never became what I would say is, is a physical blocker. As a matter of fact, David Njoku has come back to be a better blocker than he is and that was one of his weak suits um, it, it, when you it, it the knock on and Joku was. So I look at it, the, the, you know, Jordan Aiken, 6'4", 243. I take, I look look at what his grades are, what, what um, you're looking to have or what you want to upgrade. You look at what his, his, uh, his grades are. Last year he had the highest grade in PFF in his career, 72.4, in a um, 74.3. Um, receiving a uh, grade, and he was very good, very uh, secure with handling the ball, uh, 81.8 on the drops. So he's a guy who you can count on. He's not going to put the ball on the ground not, not with the drops. He's trending upwards. And like I said, he had a uh, you know, career best in his offensive grade, receiving and drops. Uh, and when you go back and look at what he did with Deshaun Watson, he's also still productive. He was not the main tight end, but he was able to do in 2019. Uh, in 2020, he was able to put up 400 yards over those uh, those two seasons apiece, um, three touchdowns over those seasons. So you know, he's, he's not going to kill you or wow you with any splash stuff. I just think he's a bit, a little tiny bit better of an upgrade when it comes to the tight end room. And I think the Browns are always looking to keep a tight end, keep some of these guys um, to be threats. The room itself now has actually gotten a, a little expensive. I mean, we have to talk now. You know, obviously, David Ajoku is making legit top tight end money, and in my opinion, deservedly so. Uh, I believe for Harrison Bryant this year, I think the chunk of change is like 2.4. So now you got another guy here at 2.5. Um, so certainly going to raise some questions that Garrett and I will get to here in uh, segment two. I uh, did want to give uh, you know, a little bit of shout out. Congrats, Donovan Peoples Jones. An extra seven hundred thousand dollars. This is one of the things where you know there's a lot of things you can beat the NFL to death over, um, but when a guy underperforms and he's trapped on a rookie contract, you know, when Donovan Peoples Jones, I mean, when you put up you know the the statistical output that he did last year, and you're basically not making much money because you're a sixth round pick, you know, and the NFL has this system to reward you for that. So you know, good. Thing for Donovan, obviously, you know, an extra step. I mean, hey, extra seven hundred k in a pocket, good for anybody, you know. But for a guy who just seems to be towing the line, doing everything that's asked of him, and you see the improvement, you know, season in, season out, week in, week out. So obviously, big props over there to Donovan Peoples Jones. Uh, obviously, you know, it was a good, good Friday for Donovan Peoples Jones. A little more chunk of change going into the pocket here. We're gonna flip it up here. You know, we're gonna get to where the tight end room is currently. Jeff Lloyd, G. Bush, your latest. Locked on Browns. The built March Madness bracket is here. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now's your time to make it count. Go to builtmarchmadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know I will be voting for the brownie bar. Always been the staple for me. And if you want the Browns to win, then you'll be voting for that bar to support your team. Support your bar or puff by supporting your team. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky lockdown listeners will get a free box of built. Not only that, 
but uh, a locked on fan will win a 12 month subscription to built to have built best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try built built the best protein bar ever. Seriously. They're amazing. You won't think they are good for you. What makes built bars and puffs so good? Well, for starters, they are all high in protein, low in sugar, and covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. Run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you are there. You can vote every day in March, so hop in and support your pick. Welcome back to the Locked on Browns podcast. Uh, we want to say thank you for all, each and every one of you that continue to make uh, Locked on Browns your first listen of each and every day. Numbers looking great over at YouTube. We're, we pushed over the 4,800 mark. That's a testament to you guys. We it looks like we're going to be able to, you know, hit that 5,000 mark. So, you know, thank you. That that shows us that we're on Let's the right Let's just set path. the goal now. Let's let, before April first, you know. And if you want to yeah. call it an early birthday present, my birthday's in late March. Let's go. Let's get these last two hundred done. Let's get to this five k. Yeah, yeah, let's and let's then, knock this five k okay. out here, man. Absolutely, so, I, I hate odd numbers. Let's get to round numbers. People. Yeah, man. So uh, shout out to everyone. Let's get let's get that gold knocked out, and uh, we'll continue to put this content out. Uh, let, let's get to it. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at the, the defensive line uh, room. Uh, excuse me, uh, the tight end room. We we just talked about you know bringing in the guy. Um, in, in like uh, Jordan Atkins, and now you look at the Browns' depth chart um, at your tight end room, and you now look around, Jeff. Um, it, it seems to be a little bit of a, of a crowded space. You got to, obviously you have uh, uh, David and Joku, and and you have him, and you you have him on a, at a pretty big, bonafide tight end deal, which is he, they're paying him like a you know top five tight end. That's just what it is. You also have Harrison Bryant, who's always been a mainstay at the second tight end. You even look at Harrison Bryant at one point in time was over David and Joku. You also have, um, you know, a couple guys like Jordan Atkins. You still have uh, uh, Zaire Mitchell Payton, who is a guy who, you know, I don't think is going to be, um, you know, break any records or anything or do anything significant because, like we said, they'll bring James Hudson in just to be a a, a blocking. Um, a blocking big guy on the goal line and short yardage. So those are all things that they they are willing to do. So I don't, I you know, I see them keeping an extra wide receiver rather than having four tight ends, right? So you may go into the season, they may keep a tight end on the practice squad, but I think, you know, dressed, I think they're only going to keep uh, Njoku and either Harris or Bryan or Atkins, uh, Jordan Atkins. So now, that means there's a camp battle. Who's going to get that second tight end position? And if I look at it like this, uh, they paid him some money. So why would they cut a guy, not give him the nod if everything being equal is kind of kind of close in the position battle? Why would you believe that Harrison Bryant would, would you know, get, get the nod over Jordan Ackett? So, you know, this is going to be something that we're going to look at during uh, the offseason. You know, it's a good thing to have, especially if you, you got guys who you think can both play at a high level. And who knows? I, you know, maybe they move him, Harrison Bryant, in a deal to bring a receiver in. Maybe they they couple Harrison Bryant with maybe a pick of some sort to get better at the wide receiver position. So we'll see exactly um, what this means or or it means for the um, the tight end room. But I I just think that this sets up a competition between Harrison Bryant and Jordan Atkins to see who's going to make this roster. And that's kind of surprising because Harrison Bryant for the last few years, basically since he's come into the fold, he's always been a long-term, I guess, um, a guy that was a long-term uh, piece for the Cleveland Browns moving forward. I don't know if it's necessarily true this year, Jeff. If I'm Harrison Bryant, I'm a little nervous. You know what I'm saying? I'm checking the status of my lease at my place. Um, <laughs> this is a team now we've talked about it and we basically heard that they're going to start looking to get the wide receivers more involved here. This is, you know, 11 personnel is going to be something they're going to be looking to do. Um, they you just signed Jordan Akins today. So if you're Harrison Bryant, you know, you ain't done nothing and you just got passed on a depth chart. I mean, there's no way to view that. They gave this man, you know, you know, we'll see the way the contract is physically written. If it's a one year deal or a two year deal, but 
So even if it's just Jordan Aikens on essentially on paper, what's a one-year deal versus Harrison Bryant, who's on a one-year deal for Harrison Bryant, this doesn't look very good. I believe the thought process here is Harrison Bryant has pla- as has peaked. He's a under 30 reception. And I think the other thing is in an ideal world, you want to get, more balls to Amari Cooper. You want to get more balls to Donovan Peoples-Jones. You want to get more balls to whoever wide receiver three is going to be, who we all agree is most likely not on this roster, and David Njoku. Um, For Harrison, this might be the best thing. Look, I don't think you want to stick around in Cleveland this year. I think you probably want to get out because you you want to go somewhere where there's the opportunity for you to catch 50 balls because you know you got free agency coming next year. So right now, your organization just told you that you know your roadblock – to what you thought your path was to the future, it is. It's a roadblock now. There's there's something significantly in your way. Um, they're giving Aikens more money than Brian is scheduled to make this year. You know, it's look at the end of the day, you feel bad for the kid, but at the end of the day, man, it's a business. It's just the way it works. You know, if somebody is better, we will find them and replace you. Nobody ever wants to hear that in whatever walk of life you do. But facts are facts. If you can be replaced for somebody who's better, it's what businesses do. They can tell you they care about you till you're blue in the face. It's all stinking lip service at the end of the damn day. Now, like G said here, we saw last year, look, when the Browns came, pushed the shove, and wanted to run the ball in short yarded situations, you know, some of it was by need. But once you saw that James Hudson can go in motion and obliterate an edge on a short yardage running play, there's no reason to say, okay, well, we'll never do that again. If it's something that works, you find a way to keep doing it. Um, could you bring back a Farrell Brown? Could you draft a tight end on day three? Could you bring in a veteran on a league minimum? All things are true. I do believe this is probably somewhere, but maybe starting now, most likely during the draft, these things can happen. And now you need to understand when the Browns, even when they're in whatever draft they are in, they do have eyes towards the next draft. So, and, and keep in mind, still next year, they're going to be a little light on picks. So, do you move Harrison Bryant in a deal where, you know, hey, if I trade him to you, you know, am I settling for a day three pick? Or are we going to say if he catches 48 passes for your team next year, that, t- that pick now jumps up a round or two? Um, all things are going to be in play, but I honestly believe that, you know, the window – It's probably officially open that if you have any interest in acquiring Harrison Bryant, I do believe the Browns will be taking those phone calls. You don't have a tight end who already makes 10 and then have two other tight ends in the room for another five. You you know, you don't pay your tight end room $15 million. I mean, you know, it's a tough break for Harrison Bryant. Um, And looking at the kid physically where G brought up the blocking aspect of his game, I haven't noticed a change in Harrison Bryant's body in three years. He physically looks exactly the same he has, you know. And, you know, David, it was never an athletic ability. It was never a strength thing. It was a getting comfortable with his hand in the dirt type of thing. To be Mm -hmm. fair, Harrison Bryant was not really asked to do that in college. And I think the Browns realize, you know, at this point, if this is the best that he is, you know, we can probably either A, get somebody better, or we can get somebody of equal value in the draft a lot cheaper. So I think a difficult day here for Harrison Bryant. And I definitely think the Browns are, you know, probably, you know, certainly, you know, going to be looking somehow, some way. Um, if there's a better opportunity for number 88, they're going to go ahead and take that. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I listen, I like what you just said. It was kind of crazy that, you know, usually I'm the, um, you know, the, the <laughs> I'm the bearer of bad news, but, you spot on. I have not seen one iota of muscle. I ain't seen no more cuts. I ain't seen no more. Man, you you, you hope like, man, Harrison Bryant really came from the offseason, put on 10 pounds of muscle, running But well, even still, like, if you're a teammate with David Njoku, wouldn't you say, man, well, I got to do something. I got to put I gotta something do, I, I at least got to get a vein going in my left body. Something. Yeah, man. It, it was, I did not see nothing new, so. Um, you're right. You dead on that, man. So we'll see what happens. But uh, like you said, tight end room is, is going to be a competition, and um, I'm looking forward to see it. And look, uh, and you know, and the other thing that does not hurt Har- does not help Harrison Bryan here is Jordan Akins walks in the door, and guess what? Yo, D, what's up? 
Hey, bro, yeah. how you yeah. been, kid? How you man, living? You how know? the family doing? You got oh, exactly, man. exactly, wow. exactly. So, you know, Harrison Bryant, <laughs> man, is a tough spot to be in. Um, but look, you know, if there's one thing, you know, I mean, as much as the thing is receiving tight ends make money, blocking tight ends play longer. Um, so for Harrison Bryant, you know, look, you probably didn't want to be here anymore anyway, man. If there's a chance you can catch 45, 50 passes, you know, maybe the grass is going to be greener for Harrison Bryant on the other side. Uh, more coming here. Your latest lockdown Browns, Jeff Lloyd, G. Bush, tearing it up as we close out the week for you all. FanDuel, you guys all know the deal. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because and now customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and three pointers drained. You're going to sit down for two and a half hours. You're going to devote yourself to a ball game. Why don't you go with the same game parlay pick five six bets that you think are attractive in that game put down a small wager with a parlay five six bets small wager it's always a big return if you hit FanDuel. so go to the website today to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets use the uh go to fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the Locked On Browns podcast. Make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that you guys are uh, subscribed to the Locked On um, Browns podcast uh, on uh, on Twitter. Because, you know, sometimes you may miss some of our updates. Sometimes you may not be around to catch all of the stuff that we have on YouTube. We post each and every episode right there on the chat, on the, on the timeline for Locked on Brown. So if you're simply on Twitter a lot more than you are on, on YouTube, we'll have you ready to go. We'll go ahead and post that, and, and you'll be able to watch the videos very easily, um, you know, right from Twitter. So thank you guys for doing that, and we appreciate it. Make sure you also follow us at GBush91 and at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd as well on Twitter. You know, we get to – let's get to the highlights of this uh, this week. I think – you know, two, there's two highlights. I could have went a, duffel, a couple of different places here. Um, but I'm going to, because we were on Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show doing like a bracket style of what was the best move the Browns have made or best moves around the league. And believe it or not, this move right here came out as number one, even amongst some of the best moves in the league. You know, you, you got, uh, you know, just to give you an example, the uh, New York Giants, uh, they Got a guy that, like with their, like Darren Waller uh, from the Raiders, who is guess been injury prone, but has shown in this league they can be a, a, a tremendous downfield threat. They got him for third round pick. Take a look at the Bengals. Uh, the Bengals upgraded from Jonah Williams and w- were able to upgrade at left tackle and get a guy um, that that is basically been to the Pro Bowl multiple times in Orlando Brown Jr. So they upgraded a little bit. But for me, let's let's bring it back to the Browns. I love the Tomlinson, uh, Tomlinson pick. I love it. And the Dalvin Tomlinson pick for me, it, 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 it was the most impressive that the Browns had and I think it has the most impact because of the simple fact of the huge, extravagant, over-the-top, glaring need they needed at defensive tackle. Now, if you look at that, you can say we got a, a bona fide guy, bona fide, that's going to be in the middle. He's going to be locking stuff up. He's going to be uh, penetrating. He's going to be a guy that you can't you forget about. And he has some pass rush ability. So now, after we come out of the, se- uh, the off season, or as we go into the draft season and, and trades happen in the mini camps, look at the difference from your line. You now have a Miles Garrett. You have Dalvin Tomlinson at the at three technique. Now you have young OG uh, Ogbo is over on the other side. He looks like he's going to be a guy that's going to be really a guy that's going to benefit from Miles Garrett being on the defense. And then look, look at how different your offensive line looks. And then now you can have competition between Hurst, have competition with Hill, have competition with, with Jordan Elliott and say, hey, Jordan, it's a long, it's a tough uphill battle. 
But uh, let's see if you got something. You got Perrion Winfrey in that mix. Hey, Perrion, let's see if you can come and, and get better and, and, and solidify yourself as a starter. So the great part about it is not only did the Browns get better up front with, with a guy that they're going to start, they got two starters guaranteed and brought in two more guys that can compete or will compete for rotating spots at that defensive tackle position. Not to mention that end, you're still going to have Isaiah Thomas. You're still going to have Alex Wright uh, rotating in. So just think, Jeff, think about how uh, you know a couple months makes a huge difference. And instead of going from a team that wasn't getting anything from their end, their two tackles, now you got some people that really can make this defensive line intriguing. You, that's the one, I, you know, there's no way you don't get super giddy just thinking about a guy like Dalvin Tomlinson, the career he's had, he can play the one, he can play the three, he can play the both effectively, Um, you know, just real quick, Um, if you've done this business for a while, you do not ask a professional athlete, oh, do you play on third down? It's your job to know right. whether or not the guy plays on third down. It's your job. It's what you're paid to do. You don't ask him that. God's sakes. I'm going to go with Juan Thornhill. Although, Juan Thornhill, great picture of Juan Thornhill and his wife in the building today. But I got to be honest, man, the dog pound. And the Thornhill's got these little little foo-foo doggies. I was a little surprised. You know, I'm, These dogs definitely have seen some Louis Vuitton bags in their time. Oh, yeah. And no oh, doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Juan, we kid, we love you. We're excited to have you here. Um, for me, it's definitely Juan Thornhill. Um, just knowing that the type of player he is, knowing the athletic ability that this guy has, um, knowing you know that he can play a true free safety role, which was the problem with what the Browns had. You brought in John Johnson the third. He's not a true free safety. So as much flack as everybody wanted to give the Browns, and I mean, as give John Johnson the third, that's fine. You got to put that on the team that brought him in too. Um, you rectified that now. You brought in this man, two Super Bowl rings, played in three of them, played in yeah. three Super Bowls, holds two rings, and you know you want guys who start walking in here. And he went from that environment, that environment, the Kansas City Chiefs. And look, the Chiefs basically said, "Look, it's just not going to work out. We ain't got the money." Um, but you get a guy to come from that environment, three Super Bowls. Won two of them and says, yeah, I'll come play for the Browns. That's This is a guy that could be a big changer for you. There's legit expectations. When Juan Thornhill ramps up his, I'm getting back into shape for another football season, it's to go to the ultimate goal, which is to pay to almost Valentine's Day is where it is now. This is the mentality that this guy has as far as his NFL career which should be the mentality of every single guy who suits up. You don't do it. You don't achieve it. It starts to go further and further into the back of your mind. But you're bringing in a guy here from a legit Super Bowl winning franchise who doesn't know any different. He doesn't. He does not know any different. Four years, been in the playoffs every year, three Super Bowls he's played in, one, two, he just doesn't know any other way. That's what the expectation is for a player like Juan Thornhill. And getting this guy in here and, you know, understanding winning, you know, and understanding all of that, just a huge, huge, you know, get. So far this week is, you know, two great moves with Tomlinson at Thornhill. Um, you know, getting Ethan Postick back, and you told me about $6 million because Ethan, Ethan Postick played like a t – and this was where everyone got nervous. Everybody thought Ethan Postick was going to be looking at $9, $10 million. Easy. You know, that because he played like a top positional offensive lineman last year. Well, Brown's got for about six. <laughs> score no problems there whatsoever obviously the uh additions of hill and maurice hurst are interesting but a fun week great job here thus far by andrew barry you know i'm still some trade market to work you know we got the nfl draft in about five six weeks um a lot of difference uh here so far you know between the coaching staff changes now the personnel changes and more to come here uh you know everybody you know <laughs> As we all say, is you know back on that Browns BS. Yeah, I think we're all back on that Browns BS. Ton of coverage here this week. Obviously, a lot going on, and we'll continue to take you through everything that comes this way. 
Uh, something pops off this weekend. We're going to do our best to you know, basically jump in here, give you one extra one if it, it, it comes to fruition. You know, some still some names out there the Browns could have had potential interest in in the wide receiver market. Certainly a couple of D tackles out there. Um, for me, if the Browns can get one more D tackle in here, I think that dream of trying to get the most athletic pass rusher you can at 42 to pair with the rest of these guys looks even that more appealing. He is Garrett Bush. You can catch him Monday through Friday, 11 to one on YouTube with the boys over at the ultimate Cleveland sports show Saturday mornings, eight to 12, 92, three, the fan, the barbershop, Shop always open. Any other things you're looking for, make sure you're following at GBush91. Myself, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. The show at Lockdown Browns, follow back account. Appreciate you all for making Lockdown Browns your first listen every day. And as for your second listen, check out Lockdown Scouting. Joe Marino, Buffalo, uh, Lockdown Bills, Kyle Krabs, Lockdown Dolphins. They've expanded their role here at Locked On. Um, these guys were always draft guys, but over the years now in getting to know guys within the business, uh, they've decided to launch their own baby together here. So the uh, draft dudes have the Locked On scouting where they're going to cover every single NFL team, and they're going to cover it, You know whether it's free agency, trades, draft. Go ahead, check it out, Joe. Kyle, top-notch guys. You're going to love the material over there. Um, and for everything else, this is Ben. Your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go Browns.